Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and a while ago I made a video regarding North Korean propaganda floating freely on TikTok and YouTube. Videos of exploring life in the hermit kingdom and shopping, you know, zones and grocery stores and, and a train where visibly the people who were on there were genuinely fearful of their life. At least that's what it appeared to me. Now, of course, propaganda in North Korea go hand in hand like, you know, baseball and apple pie. And at the end of the day, it's the most interesting place for me because it's literally one of the only regimes in the world that has so tightly controlled its people. And it makes me really proud and really like happy and really thankful for living in like Canada or the US or the Western side of the world where even though we have our problems, at least we don't live underneath some serious, serious totalitarianism. Now, of course, accessing the internet in North Korea is like trying to find a needle in a haystack, except the haystack is the size of New York City. It's not something that's possible for everyone, ladies and gentlemen, simply because when you use internet in the Hermit Kingdom, it is incredibly tightly regulated. So of course, what it really brings me out to is this one channel. Now, since I made that video, a lot of those channels were actually taken down by YouTube, by TikTok, under guides of actually violating uh, the community guidelines, or at least that's what it appeared at the time. Now, YouTube doesn't really reply to why these accounts are removed. They just are, and that's pretty much what it comes down to, okay? So again, it could be the fact that the actual TOS was violated, or maybe there was some issue regarding like actual sanctions between the US and North Korea. But anyways, let's get down to it. The reason I'm making this video is a few days ago, North Korean life showed up on TikTok of all places. Now, this account is really wild to me because in the span of days, I'm talking days, they actually ended up getting around 100,000 followers, which shows me that blowing up on TikTok is insane. But of course, to get down into it, they actually have propaganda that's not even like trying to hide itself anymore. This is straight up the wildest propaganda we're gonna watch here today. My daily morning walk is- oh, I hate this TikTok voice. North Korea. Look at it, dude! They're Very walking around! Very quiet and calming. They've got like buildings that look like they're out of NES cartridges. And it's so wild that for one, there's not really a lot of vehicles floating around there, but also, What's really interesting is they've got these massive roads and the person filming this is literally in the middle filming the whole road. This is their daily walk. They straight up just walk down the middle of the road. <laughs> you got like one dude standing in the center, probably acting like the traffic chief of the area. Traffic for what? <laughs> it's insane. So here's like a night performance in North Korea. So they're at like a, a restaurant. But yeah, you've actually got people partying around. One thing to understand here is no matter how you want to perceive this as propaganda, it does kind of show you a light into sort of how the middle class or maybe like the high like elites live in North Korea. Because to actually party like this in the Hermit Kingdom would definitely require that you be in a slightly higher place than the average Joe over there. But I think it's insane when you look at it. If you've noticed, they've also got smartphones. And this is something that I have a great interest in because North Korea actually has its own brand of modern smartphones. I think they call it the Arirang, which are state-run smartphones with like their state-controlled applications. It's effectively an Android ROM with like just whatever is like a, you know, state approved, right? And obviously filled with, you can imagine, some state-level monitoring. Hell yeah, boys, we're playing some discount puzzle game. Is this a puzzle game? 100%. They just straight up using Yoshi's Island into it. Nobody in the country has played a Nintendo game. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Actually, wait, hold on. I think they're just playing their actual games. They actually just have their straight up own video games. They just cloned their own little video games. That's insane. Or they probably downloaded something out of like South Korea and like modified it a little bit. It's like the taps are so weird. Also, one thing that I've learned about this too is like, no matter where you live, I'm pretty sure that's a crack. Everyone always has a cracked phone screen in the front, dude. You're always gonna find that one dude with a broken screen. It's insane that we're watching federal propaganda from the government of North Korea showcasing the world that they're not far behind. They actually have modern day stuff. Young boy prideful of the motherland. Hell yeah. North Korea, fuck yeah, baby. I, I, this is insane, man. <laughs> like, it's wild. I think they're, I, are they, like, up against, like, the, is this, like, the South Korean, like, North Korean DMZ? Is the kid just, like, straight up flexing NK over to them? <laughs> That's wild, dude. You got, like, the, you got, like, a straight up, like, agent escort for the kid. That's insane, dude. Buddy makes one wrong move and it's over. That's true. That is very true. 
So again, it's it's an interesting lens that's state controlled to showcase um, just uh, how normal this side of the world truly is. What's even wilder is how surreal it even gets because it doesn't just stop here. Many people think that North Korea, I'm doing this to avoid the crappy voice because it's going to kill me. Uh, North Korea has no cars. In reality, we have many cars such as Audi, Mercedes, Hyundai, Hyundai, and many more. Interesting that they got a Hyundai. Isn't that like a South Korean vehicle? So like, oh, that is a South Korean vehicle. What, why are they using, why are they using their enemies like equipment? Why are they using their enemies technology in their city? That's kind of wild. Wait, participating in this activity could result in you and our, our others getting hurt. Yeah, don't record in the middle of the street, okay? You could die. <laughs> but here they got like a Hyundai, like SUV driving around. And then you've got like, I had to block this audio out because it's like Ivici, so they're just using copyrighted shit here. And then, uh, and, then, and then what's wild is like, they've got like an Audi. So they've got one vehicle right here, the Audi. I think it's like a Q7 or something. And then like, okay, so th th they've got the other vehicle. And then where's the Mercedes? <laughs> they got the Mercedes right here. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, so they actually do have some cars in North Korea. Now, how much of these are probably owned by the elites? How much of these are actually owned? They're using the same S-Class. They're literally just filming the same car. It's not even an S, it's an E200. They're just filming the same vehicle, just moving around, just to show that they have like, modern like just to just to show that they have like some luxury cars in the country they probably do there are elites that live in north korea no shit they're probably driving like a luxury vehicle how many of the average over there has a car i'm gonna wager not many i look to the front if we go back six minutes we can absolutely see people were like biking around there were no cars on the road so sometimes they have cars on the road sometimes they don't it almost seems like the state is just manipulating it's it's like a big Truman Show thing going on. Watching movies for free in Pyongyang, North Korea is the future. Oh shit. Homies discovered they have like a, they have Plex. <laughs> All right, let's see this. So they got like movies, they got a whole theater. I have never seen one person truly smile. Like it's wild. Like if you look at it, how rare this is. Like here, here you got these people walking by. Like everyone over here just like stares at the camera for a brief second and then just looks away. Like you've got people here walking around looking at the camera. It's like, you gotta understand, internet and smartphones and technology is so tightly controlled in the country. So when you have somebody with internet access uploading stuff like this, it's not an individual of their free accord. It's literally state propaganda that's being passed around. What's even wilder is it's not TikTok that's just done this either. You literally also have other channels that have popped up like this Olivia Natasha that's literally showcased themselves on, you know, like running a travel series, the tour series. And of course they were on shorts. I saw this on shorts myself, mostly because I look up a lot of North Korean stuff and I'm pretty sure it gets passed into me in my shorts algorithm. But of course you can see like they've got special videos where they're talking about Pyongyang and of course like ice cream. So let, let's, wa let's watch the ice cream in Pyongyang real quick. Let's get a, let's get a close idea of it. Hi everyone, I'm Yumi from Pyongyang. This is my first video. What kind of videos would be good enough? To be honest, this is what I choose for today. I guess you might be more curious about Pyongyang. I can see the uh, I can see they have not discovered audio mixing. <laughs> But then again, neither is my channel. <laughs> to be real with you, it's wild because it's just like a travel like guide. It, it, it's all it is. Just like walking around showing like ice cream in the country at like some convenience store. That's all the video is. It's just walking around the one convenience store they have <laughs> showcasing the ice cream and milk that they've got. That's crazy. Could you imagine like the US like federal like travel agency being like, hey guys, come over here. We got some, we got some crazy ice cream at this convenience store in Houston, boys. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> So they've also got like a football school, which is kind of cool. Like they're, you know, they, they, they've got their own like national sports teams, which is to be expected. But yeah, they, this is just another example to showcase. Yeah, they're just like everybody else, boys. They play the sports. Dude, I swear to God, I'm not even making that sound that's so rehearsed. It's like, <laughs> they told him, it's like, hey, listen, 
Messi, Ronaldo, you just gotta remember these names and these teams. <laughs> Do not mess up this take. <laughs> it, it's wild when you watch this too, because like it doesn't really even feel like it's made by a YouTuber. Like if it's one thing you wanna make like propaganda, like a YouTuber did this, it, 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 it literally has the hallmark like trades of like just a big production group filming it and just releasing it for the public to watch. That's what I get out of it. It doesn't even feel like it's literally a YouTuber. It just feels like some Nat Geo, like discount Nat Geo in North Korea filming this and uploading it to a YouTube channel. Because that's probably what it is, ladies and gentlemen, to be honest with you. There's been a bit of research that has gone on and a lot of people have kind of like isolated it to a possible like company in North Korea a production studio known as Sogwang, which has actually been known to, or actually alleged to have connections to Echoes of Truth or, or various other like, you know, YouTubers, vloggers that like to actually talk about North Korea and upload videos to extra face, e external facing like internet sites like YouTube or TikTok, so to speak. And it's a lot of these agencies that are trying to rebrand the image or make a, or, or, or make the impression of North Korea look closer to the westernized world, to like more of the free world than it, than it normally has. And again, to understand the reason I'm making this video necessarily is because it's so wild to me to always look into North Korea. It's the one part of the world where like it's completely detached. You really can't get in unless you're bribing people or you're in this like tightly state controlled, you know, tour group. It, it, it's a part of the world that most people will never be able to see if they live outside it. And for a lot of people that live within North Korea, they'll never be able to see the world that's facing outside too. So it's kind of wild to see propaganda footage that comes out of them. Look, this is government propaganda. This is literally the feds posting a video to try to like convince you that they're normal. But if it's one interesting aspect about North Korea propaganda is it does always showcase a realistic life into, into the middle class or the elite. Because at the end of the day, there is an elite that lives in North Korea. They have mansions, they have private beach residences, and they've got money. But for the general people out there, for the public that we saw at the beginning, literally biking around and moving to their jobs every day, those guys have no freedom. And it's one thing that we definitely get to look into, especially with a lot of this propaganda. Now, how long does this channel stay up? I'm going to wager a week, a few days, before it eventually gets taken down. But that will never stop the North Korean propaganda machine, because for every channel you take down, a couple months later, they come back, trying it all brand new once again, like nothing ever happened before. But ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.